Now we've covered hacking of just about every single game console going all the way back to the days of the Sony PlayStation 1 all the way through history and even recent discoveries of the Nintendo Switch in 2017, the PlayStation 4 and even in recent times hacking the PlayStation 5. But one game console that seemingly stood firm was the Xbox One. Now you may remember that the Xbox One launched back in 2013 and as of pretty much up until this year there was no known kernel exploit that was ever released for the Xbox One because the security was just too good and it also had the ability to kind of keep itself updated in the background thereby pretty much just closing any loophole that was ever discovered. I should also mention that the motivation to hack the Xbox One was reduced significantly by Microsoft providing developer mode or dev mode, which is the walled off environment where developers can build and test UWP apps. But this doesn't mean there hasn't been any motivation. Back in June of 2024 of this year, there was an exploit known as collateral damage that was released publicly and this was kind of the first known kernel exploit that was ever released now this particular exploit only will run on three known kernel revisions of the firmware so if you don't have those revisions of the firmware then you're pretty much out of luck and unfortunately if you don't then there's really no way for you to exploit your xbox one but one of the things that has come out of the exploit that released earlier this year is now we can start to consider things like dumping of Xbox One games. Now this has been a very exciting time for the Xbox One community because it is now possible to dump Xbox One games and have them fully decrypted and made available on anything outside of the Xbox One basically being able to archive them and preserve them for future generations. But not only this, things in recent weeks have started to progress even faster with the launch of a translation layer known as X11. And this piece of software will simply take any Xbox One game that has been previously dumped and decrypted and run them on a Windows PC under Windows with a very, very fast performance. This is not emulation, this is a translation layer as mentioned, and what we're talking about is effectively taking any Xbox specific function calls and then translating those into the equivalent PC versions. And because if you recall, the Xbox is a unified platform with PC, these early looks are showing incredible speeds. So if we take a look at some of this in more detail, you can see here that on September 8, X11, the Twitter uh, handle posted this particular update and it says, introducing X11, an Xbox One translation layer for Windows PC. Currently six games are fully playable with others reaching logos and in game more news to come. Now this is obviously very exciting news. And you can see here that this first uh, screenshot here is launching into Minecraft Xbox One edition. And we've got another one here of Peggle 2 running with the Windows 11 kind of about dialogue just to kind of prove that it's running under Windows. This is the Xbox One version again. There's also Limbo running on Windows 11, Xbox One version. And there's also Sonic Mania, which seems like it's one of those games that is one of the earliest games to run on emulation or translation layers on any particular system that it's available for. But you can see here it's running on, on Windows 11, just like we saw the other games. Now there's also been some really interesting updates and this is kind of where I start to get really interested in this. And that is in recent times, we saw some updates where Forza Horizon 2 now reaches the title screen that was on September the 9th. Now, the reason why this is really interesting is because Forza Horizon 2 is one of those games, while it did have an Xbox 360 version, it was delisted many, many years ago, and the Xbox One or the Xbox One X enhanced versions of Forza Horizon 2 are the versions that really people want to play. And unfortunately, if you don't have a physical copy of it, you simply can't play that game anymore. And this is where we start to get into where it's really becoming valuable to start to think about preserving Xbox One games. And in fact, if you take a look at the Forza Horizon forums, the support forums, you can see here that there is a note here. This was obviously from a while ago, but it says Forza Horizon 2 unavailable for purchase and online services closure. There's also another one here, Forza Horizon 3 unavailable for purchase that also has an Xbox One version, which is also getting into game on X-Wine 1. 
Forza Horizon 1 unavailable for purchase. Forza Motorsport 7 is leaving the Microsoft Store. Forza Motorsport 6 unavailable for purchase. Forza Horizon 2 won't fix or by design. So you can see here that we're talking about a ecosystem where games don't tend to stick around. They get delisted, they get removed. And unfortunately, if you're someone that has missed out on playing these games, or if you did at one point and you want to revisit them, or maybe you had an Xbox One, you want to revisit that game, but you sold your Xbox and there's no way to play that game, then the way to proceed, like everything else in the community, is preservation and basically being able to archive these games and being able to play them on emulators or translation layers in this instance, such as X11. Now, one really interesting thing that they also have on the X11 Twitter is they do have a couple of videos, and this is Minecraft Xbox One Edition booting into game and as you can see, we've got the Windows 11 background behind it just to kind of prove that this is the Xbox One edition of Minecraft. Now, of course, Minecraft runs on many, many different systems. So this in of itself isn't really a big deal, but think of it another way. This is the native Xbox One version running on PC. And you can see that performance is quite good now of course i'm not really sure about the specs of the target system that's being run on at the moment but if you do look on the top left here you can see that this frame counter is locked at 144 uh, frames per second which obviously is the refresh rate of the pc itself but it's running at full frame rate and it looks fantastic the sound is also present in the game as well and this is very, very exciting news. Now, of course, Minecraft is a very simple game. And one of the things that we're seeing with x one one is that it's kind of started out in very much the same way as early PlayStation 4 emulation in that it's able to kind of boot into more simple games, uh, ones such as Minecraft or ones that are kind of 2D style games like Sonic Mania. But I will say that at this time at least, it's still not yet possible to render you know, complex 3D geometry. And if we take a look at the Forza Horizon 2 video that is on the X1 channel, you can see that while the game does boot into its intro sequence and into the menus just fine, the game looks and runs at you know, solid frame rates all around. When we actually get into game, you can see that there is just no geometry being rendered whatsoever. But this is something that is very, very exciting. It's something that we've been waiting a very long time to see something like this happen, and it's finally here. Now, many people out there may be wondering, what is even the point of, you know, just dumping Xbox One games when the majority of them are, are available on PC? That is a very, very good question. And you're right, there are many games, Minecraft included, that does run on PC. There is a native PC version or there's other emulators that can play Minecraft as well. So why do we care about the Xbox One version of many of these games that have PC versions or PC ports? Well, it's simply because we're talking about preservation. Having the ability to have any Xbox One game preserved is valuable. And many different people want to play games or have games preserved for many different reasons. But one of the things I will say above and beyond anything else is that there are Xbox One titles that are exclusive to the Xbox One. And there are also Xbox One versions of games that have specific Xbox One enhancements and, ex and specific Xbox One features. So for example, a game like Destiny is available on the Xbox One, and that would be something that I think a lot of people would be interested in. We're talking about the original Destiny. Now Destiny, of course, is playable on RPCS3, I believe, and I think it may boot on Xenia, but they're previous generations of the hardware. An Xbox One version of Destiny has value to some people that would be interested in preserving that game and maybe revisiting it. Of course, there is no PC version. Another game such as Halo 5 Guardians. Now, whatever you think about Halo 5, whether you love it or hate it, at the end of the day, the game is still locked on the Xbox One. There is no PC version. It never made its way to the Master Chief Collection. So having that game being able to be played on PC would be very, very exciting as well and having that game preserved. And of course, there's also something like Rare Replay, which is 
locked onto the Xbox One as well and having Rare Replay made available on PC and even think about, you know, having this Rare Replay collection running on the Steam Deck via X1 One. I know I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, but those are the types of things we can start to think about where preserving these games and making them available outside of the Xbox and having them you know, being able to be played on translation layers is very exciting, especially for someone like myself. Now, I also want to say that X1 One is not the only compatibility or translation layer, I should say, that's being developed right now for the Xbox One. There's also another one called Win Durango. I do expect we'll start to see some public releases of either of these translation layers in the not too distant future. Obviously, things are getting very exciting for the Xbox One community and look this has been a very long time coming but i think we're slowly starting to get to that point where more people can start to get excited about the xbox one all over again there's also additional dumping efforts that are going on to dump basically the entire archive of xbox one games uh, that are available and look i think things are starting to really start to ramp up i'm very excited about the future of xbox one I'm using emulation in air quotes, but the translation layer approach, I think finally we're at that point now where we have PS4. Obviously that has seen a lot more improvement over the last 12 months with games like Bloodborne running in game now and being able to be pretty much played from start to finish. At least that's my understanding. And now we have Xbox One in the mix. Things are very exciting for the future of all things emulation, translation layers, whatever you want to call it. Things are really starting to cook here and I'm very excited about it. What do you guys think about the Xbox One dumping that's been going on and the X1 One translation layer that is out there? I think it's very exciting stuff. There's obviously a lot more to come here. We're going to continue to cover it and follow along with it as things progress. And if there is a public release of the emulator, we may take a look at it ourselves and check it out on the channel as well. But for now, guys, we're going to leave it here for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching. If you did like it, please don't forget to leave me a thumbs up and we'll catch you guys in the next episode. Bye for now.